Welcome to Nordson Asimtech here at Productronica. I'm joined by Camille Seibert. Uh, nice to see you again, Camille. Good to see you, Trevor. How are you? Good. Um, so you basically were at the, the beginning of the whole conformal coding process, mm -hmm. way back in the beginning with your dispensers, and you've got a whole range of valves that do uh, some amazingly tight uh, configurations for dispensing. You've put this together into this uh, panorama line uh, behind us here, which is really uh, quite innovative in, in the sense that it's reduced the whole footprint uh, down, it does the curing, does everything. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as you mentioned, at Asymtech, we have a history of building the conformal coating machine. Um, but the dispenser is really only a part of the process. Then it comes down to curing, which helps maintain the integrity of your coating. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the inspection, which verifies that you've actually appropriately coded what it is that you're trying to do. And in the age of traceability and data storage, um, having that inspection capability to really review and store mm -hmm. those images and data reports is really an effective way to solidify your entire process. Yeah, you have control over the entire process, which makes it a lot, a lot easier. Uh, let, let's look, first of all, in more depth at this um, configuration in, in the dispenser. You get, it looks like three valves in here. Uh, tell me what's going on. So as you mentioned, uh, with a lot of high density components and things like that, there's a lot more selectivity that needs to go into these systems. Uh, so what we're showing here is the triple applicator setup. Uh, so we have one applicator, our film coat applicator, mm -hmm. that dispenses wide passes. So it covers the majority of the board. Right. And on the left side, we have our SC400 applicator, which is our conformal coating jet. So it dispenses at a much smaller volume, mm -hmm. and it has a needle to provide accessibility near tall components, difficult to reach areas. So that way our customers are able to significantly reduce any masking that they may need. I was going to ask you that because I mean, so you, you think you can reduce the amount of masking that's, that's needed. You don't. You, you need to still do some of these difficult components that you don't want to get anything onto, or sensitive components. Um, but you you can reduce it with the, the tighter line definition that you're providing. Absolutely, we can reduce it, and in some cases we can eliminate it. And in addition to having the capability within the applicators, once you establish your process, you need to maintain your process. So another thing that we're showing on the system is our cadence flow control system, which closes the loop around flow rate, so that way we can make sure that you're maintaining a consistent and stable process throughout your entire production. And the system really takes care of itself. So that, that essentially measures the volume of, of the material that you're putting down. So you, you have, obviously, further down the line here, you have a visual inspection of the coating, but this measures the volume. So I'm assuming if it's not putting down the correct volume, that'll show up in, in, in these numbers. Right, exactly. If you get any sort of variation in the amount of material you're putting down, that could show up as too much coverage, that could show up as too little coverage, and you could see defects on, on your parts. So one of the great things about supplying the entire line, where you have the inspection and the process controls, is that you really have redundancy as far as quality goes for your entire process. Mm -hmm. So you verify that with the dispensing system, and then you confirm that with the ACI system at the end. So can this uh, closed loop system uh, automatically then uh, add missing material? So what it does is it makes uh, adjustments to, <coughs> to verify that your overall process outside of the applicator is dispensing the same. So at this point it doesn't necessarily add material, but it makes sure that you're getting the same process at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. It's uniformity. Um, so let's move further down the line. And we've got, um, what have we got behind us then? We've got a conveyor that takes you into the, the inspection side. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of this line particularly, this is our Panorama S line, which in addition to high-end process controls, really highlights um, space saving efficiency. So it takes the curing process and puts it in the bottom level of the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a single source monitor um, where a single operator is able to maintain and visualize where boards are within the line and it controls the heating component of the line and brings it around to the ACI system for final inspection. Okay. And this really just helps reduce overall floor space. Yeah, that's great. So it takes it out of here uh, or does it take it takes it out this way and takes it down into the bottom half of the of the, of the system? 
does the curing in the bottom half of the system, mm -hmm. brings it up again for inspection, right. um, and um, that's, right. the, that's the end of it really, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly, so your entire coating process mm. is contained in this one singular line. Um, so from our position, we're supplying the overall process expertise, we're supplying the equipment, so for our customers, they don't have to be knowledgeable on each individual piece in the process. Mm. They can depend on us to provide that expertise for the overall process, a single supplier for support and expertise, um, so that way we can really help our customers uh, do more with their coding process. Wonderful, wonderful. And just one final question, I mean, obviously in, when you're coming to things like uh, coating LEDs and things like that, the thickness testing is important. Is that something you can add into the system? Absolutely, so the ACI system has a few different measurement capabilities. So it's measuring thickness and it can produce a report that shows trend analysis and things like that with thickness. We also have it producing live CPK measurements right now. Okay. So that way it can document the uh, X and Y positional accuracy that you're getting from the conformal coding system. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that we're also introducing at the show is more communication between the ACI system and the SL940 system where if the ACI system tracks a certain number of failed boards within a set period of time or consecutive boards, it can actually stop your production further up in the process at the SL940. Yeah, that's very useful. Okay, Great. Well, it's a, it's a very impressive system, uh, Camille. I want to thank you for showing us it today. Uh, this, I believe some other dispensers are around the other side of the, the booth that we're going to take a look at. So uh, for now, thank you for showing us the conformal coding. Absolutely, thank you very much. So we're staying on the Nordson Asymtech booth and uh, this time we're around looking at the dispensers and I'm joined by Sonia Aldridge. Uh, nice to see you, Sonia. Nice to see you too, thanks for being here. Okay, um, so one of the new things this week is the, the Vortic range of dispensers and they come in three different levels. Let's start with the, the small dispenser which is on the machine uh, on the other side of the booth. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Okay. So we do have three different families. Uh, the Vortec Progressive Cavity Pump. Uh, we have the VPS, which is the smallest volumetric output, and it's the smallest in the market as well. Uh, that allows us to work on applications for mobile and MEMS devices. Mm -hmm. And we have that in single component and two component as well. Okay. Then we move on to the VPM. VPM is for medium volumes yeah. uh, that it targets more of the package assembly and some automotive applications. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to the VPG, which is the largest of the pumps that we have in the family. And that allows us to target more of the automotive markets. The larger stuff like gaskets and things like that. Exactly. Battery assembly. Think about that. So let's talk about the, the displacement pump system that you're using. Um, it's, it's tighter controlled, it's not affected by external elements uh, like uh, that change the viscosity or if it does, it, it compensates. Uh, explain a little bit about how it works. Okay. Sure. So the beauty about the a progressive cavity pump is that it's a closed system as opposed to some other systems where you have a lot of, um, it's an open, they're open systems. Mm -hmm. The closed system allows you to have uh, variation in, in temperature within the environment or the mm -hmm. ambient temperature, mm -hmm. uh, allows you to have viscosity changes within the day, yep. and you're still able to achieve the same volumetric output regardless of those conditions. Mm -hmm. So it really allows you to get that higher repeatability when you really, where you really need it. Right. Um, that's good. So, so that system uh, uh, is used across the whole Vortec range, um, and uh, you can get them, as, as you say, single component or, or dual component. That's right. So the nice thing about the progressive cavity pump is that it's basically an endless piston. Mm -hmm. You're always a continuous flow, mm -hmm. and that allows you to, uh, up to scale it to a two-component dispenser, mm -hmm. which um, allows you to fine-tune the mix ratio by uh, changing the ratio, changing the RPM per pump to get the desired ratio that you're looking for. Great, great. Okay. Well, it's great to see uh, new things coming out from Asymtech, as always. Uh, Sonia, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for being here.